This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Hi, everyone. Hi. And welcome to, now that we've done this for a few <laughs> seconds here, welcome to Saturday Morning Mysteries. I am one host, Alexis. Hi, I'm the other host. I'm Grace. Hello. What's up? And yeah, we're back. We are back um, to tell more more tune tales mm-hmm. from the crypt of Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. And yep, we're still uh, on Scooby. We are. We've got a couple more episodes focusing on Mystery Inc. and our favorite mm-hmm. detective dog. Um, and then we're gonna switch it up going forward, looking at other shows to tackle, mm-hmm. other investigations to retell. And Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think we we mentioned last episode, you know, if you have other show ideas, shoot us an email, SaturdayMorningMysteries at gmail.com. Hopefully by this point, by the point in which this episode is getting published, we've also had a couple tune tangents, our little like bonus, you know, just tangents about tunes. That's why we call it tune tangents yeah. uh, mm-hmm. have been released. So if you have things that you want us to just kind of shoot the shit on as well, email those over too, or leave a comment or something. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, great. So uh, I've got, you're telling to tell a story today. today. Yeah. yeah. It's so I went last week and boom. Yes. Now it's now, you. Now we're back to me. Um, yes. So la- my last episode, which was two weeks ago, I went mm-hmm. modern with it, but I promised I was going to come back to the OG Scooby Doo. Where are you? Okay. Thus, what I have done this week. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna backtrack. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll I'll get into obviously like the the season episode title, all of that stuff. Um, but we're going to start really broad before we even get into the episode today, because this requires some background discussion. Um, okay. As, and, as, as usual with, as uh, they do. with Scooby-Doo, they like to tie in some, yeah. some real interesting history in there. Yeah, exactly. In this, I will say that our episode just kind of brushes on it, but I thought it would be, it's a topic of interest for both of us. And I thought, you know, it required to get into it a little bit because um, it's pretty integral to the actual crime. So uh oh. I will say, you know, we've like, we've brushed on this a little bit here and there, but like, we haven't explicitly named this. The look of confusion on your face is. I, it's half confusion, half excitement. I'm like, okay, I'm, great. I'm trying to guess where you're going with this, okay. but I, I don't know where you're going. It's a rare occasion where mm-hmm. I can't read your mind. I don't I know, know what's going to happen. Truly, then, so. truly, truly. I'm, I'm very excited. It's more okay. excitement than confusion. Okay, great. I'll take either. Um, yes. <laughs> so I, I will in a moment pause for your literal professional opinion, not oh. just like a ha ha funny professional opinion, uh, but, or like, you know, using that phrase, uh, lightly, yeah. but a literal professional opinion that we will get from a lawyer, uh, oh boy. with right. the asterisk I'm going to preface that, this. This yep, is not legal ahead. advice. Yep. <laughs> Nothing you. that I say. And this goes for every video, mm-hmm. every video. I, uh, I not your lawyer. Nope. I'm not Grace's lawyer. I'm nope. not even my own lawyer. Nope. I am never giving legal advice. Yep. I am literally just joking. Everything yes. I say is do not take anything that I say seriously. Yes. Do not follow my advice Mm-mm. unless it sounds actually kind of good. But even but in that case, legal based, get an actual it. lawyer. <laughs> yes. Do not call me. I You cannot call me to nope. give you legal advice. Nope, nope, None nope, of nope, that. Nope. None of it. So this um, and is I, just me wildly speculating on yes. how funny things in real and fictional worlds can be. Yes, and maybe exactly. tying in a few words that I heard one of my professors in law school <laughs> say at some point. Uh huh. Exactly. <laughs> and I figured, you know, we had mentioned in the past that you're a lawyer, and thus my uh, yeah yes, comfort I, in which calling you out on this. Exactly. I do um, not mind telling the world that I am a lawyer. I worked yes. hard for that shit. All right. Exactly. I'm but be I'm proud no of her people. I'm not, yeah, your I'm not your freaking lawyer. <laughs> uh, but we'll. Start start with my uh, unprofessional opinion um, mm-hmm. and start with actually a uh, existential question that I remember being posed at the beginning of an international law class that I took once. Um, okay. The professor, and this is uh, in undergrad, I am not a lawyer, but uh, the professor began the class by asking us, does international law even exist? Ah. 
So the core of this question lies in the fact that there's no international jurisdiction to implement uh, and uphold international law. You know, there's United Nations treaties, sure, and there's generally agreed upon rules, but enforcement, it's a really gray area. And if the parties intend uh, something to be legally binding, um, then like, is it still legally binding if there's no enforcement mechanism? It's more so general consent is what happens in international law and my understanding of it. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily make it a law in the traditional sense that we think of as like United States law. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even more so on the international scale, if a part, if a country doesn't sign on to it, then it's even more so not a full law. If they, if they sign on to something, but they don't create a law in their own country around it, then again, is this a law or not? Mm -hmm. um, especially, yeah, to the signed parties, how they implement it, how they see it versus unsigned parties. Um, so I'd like to get briefly, I know you're not an international lawyer, Alexis, but I'd like to get your quick take on this before I continue. Well, funny you mentioned that. Let me grab my international <laughs> Don't knock down your bookcase. Right here, I know, oh, right? On <laughs> emergency situation. <laughs> yes, there is an international law book up there, though. I did also I took a course. Well, I guess you could call it a course. That's funny. I hope some of my classmates from that class are listening because uh -oh. they'll understand me saying that. Uh -oh. uh, no, so yeah, um, you're. I, I pretty much like agree with a lot of what you mm. said there. So there. Um, I would say if we're looking at the United States in particular with like the way our courts view international law, yeah. and again, I, yeah. I'm not an international lawyer. This is just from taking a class and just like kind of keeping up with news about this stuff, but not even really. But <laughs> if we're looking at the way that American courts, particularly like federal courts, look at international law, they look, they have definitely used like norms as a guidance of what mm. we can do in America. So they, they, they've looked at both, right? Like sometimes there are treaties that actually set out, you know, legal guidelines on what countries can do or what individuals can and can't do within mm -hmm. other countries. Um, but then there are also just laws that other countries individually have on the books. So for example, mm -hmm. um, in a capital punishment case here, in America, like a, a death sentence or death penalty, whatever case, uh, the Supreme Court used principles of international law in the sense like they looked at other countries and decided, well, can you kill a minor under the death penalty in France? Mm. Can you do it in the United Kingdom? Can you do it in this country, in that country? No. Mm -hmm. So you can't do it here either. Mm. Um, but then you have, on the other hand, treaties through the UN. You know, we've talked about that kind of briefly here before, like UNESCO, <laughs> uh -huh. for example, yep. or like uh, the uh, World Intellectual Property Organization. Like mm -hmm. they set treaties for like licensing IP rights among countries. Mm -hmm. um, what you were mentioning with like sometimes if a country doesn't sign on to it, um, it has to, some treaties have to be is like self-executing. So uh. if, if a treaty is self-executing, then as soon as a, like a, the parliamentary body of a country, like the legislator or the legislative body or the parliament signs mm -hmm. on or agrees with it, or sorry, as soon as the president does, sorry, um, okay. a self-executing treaty will automatically become like law pretty much in that country. Okay. But if it's not self-executing, then it gets to what you were saying, mm. where Congress will need to write some sort of yes. bill to then implement it. So if Congress doesn't do that and it requires that, then it's it's just paper. Mm. Doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah, there's a there's like different ways on how. Yes, there is international law, is there? but it really, as we're seeing actually in the news, like right yes. now, international law at the time law, of this recording. At the time of this recording, right? Yeah. It's uh, late February, so yes. <laughs> looking in the future, if you think back at what was going on in the world in late February, yes. and hopefully is not no longer going yeah. on by the That'd time that amazing. we publish this, yep. but who knows? Um, yeah, international law is really only as strong as, you know, the the bodies that enforce it or that are yep. like willing to that actually uphold it. it. 
Yeah. yeah. So a lot of it really is kind of like handshake agreements and you hope that you don't have autocrats in power who <laughs> <laughs> don't say, care about it. Handshake. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pretty much. So. Yeah. Um, great. Well, thank you for that take. Uh, I do want to briefly side note. Uh, it sounds like whatever your actual international law class in law school was, was a journey. Uh, mine in undergrad was extremely fun. And I had, I, my uh, culmination of, and I think primarily because the, the professor was great, but he was also a huge fucking nerd like myself mm -hmm. and our like final paper, which I have pulled up on the side um, is uh, was literally, he gave us a scenario in which essentially different characters from Lord of the Rings are seeking <laughs> like international, like uh, satisfaction due to like the different, like dramas and traumas that happened and like on this international scale and so i had to write I wrote, like a 10 page paper um about awesome. yeah whether or not um uh the uh sauron dark lord sauron who's mordor's head of state um if you could uh yeah bring uh different cases against him due to different circumstances within lord of the rings so um mm. yeah it was a pretty amazing class uh yeah. due yeah, to exactly. said Definitely. scenario it sounds like it was perhaps more effective yes also clearly class. undergrad versus the actual law well, school course yeah true it's like <laughs> it's, that not sounds fun. a lot more fun than like yes learning. i mean okay i'm not gonna like i, I do like reading supreme court stuff but <laughs> i would much rather read about like yeah that kind of stuff or write about that stuff exactly than write about like oh the supreme court looks at intellectual property treaties this way yep like, oh. versus like i got to use what i learned in international law and like wildly speculate essentially exactly. for a class uh yeah made it fun yep exactly <laughs> um great well today uh we will be obviously dealing with some international law that um oh specifically mm -hmm. um, and i hope everyone is ready for me to butcher trying to say these words in latin um uh oh yes okay <clears throat> we'll be dealing specifically today with mayor librium and and then separately, Hotus Humani Generius. Also, no, do you know what that means? <laughs> no, son. Okay, great. No. I thought you were about to like tell me, and I was about to be like, like wow, a couple Jesus of those Christ. words kind of sound familiar. Nope. Latin um, is used a lot in law books, but no, I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's dead now. language for a reason. Yeah, uh, exactly. Anyways, this is also known as freedom of the seas and the enemy of all kind. Which in oh. non-weird Latin legal speak, uh, but as defined by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, today we're talking about piracy on the high seas. Oh my. Yep. So according it. to this widely accepted, although not universally ratified, so again, is it real? Yes, let's not think too much about it. Convention, mm -hmm. high seas piracy is a very narrow definition. According to law.com, a crime of piracy in the international waters requires, so you have to hit these requirements in order to be considered piracy on the high seas, quote, one, a privately motivated act of violence, two, committed upon the high seas or otherwise in a place outside the jurisdiction of any state, or three, or end three, launched from one ship against another ship, which is called the two ship requirement, um, also uh, of note is that anything like this, this, these categories, uh, this note about universal jurisdiction and being outside of a jurisdiction of any state, state meaning any like country, not just country. like United yeah. States and yeah, different treaties. A sovereign. Region. Yeah, a sovereign entity or nation. Um, and universal jurisdiction means that it's an area in which uh, this no state has direct jurisdiction in, but they can technically arrest and commence proceedings uh, on some of these against a pirate specifically, no matter where the person in this universal area, kind of like no man's land is from. Mm -hmm and who the harm is done to. So if you're on the high seas, my understanding is that, you know, like if a uh, act of piracy was committed on the high seas against a Brit by an American, someone from France could uh, take and uh, address this scenario. Um, so basically, yeah, it's like no one owns these waters. And so uh, it gets complicated quickly, yes. I would say. Yes. Um, End of note is that if an act of piracy doesn't occur on those international waters, which again, no nation owns, 
but if it's within someone's jurisdiction, then obviously the state's definition of piracy applies, which can deviate from that UN convention. Mm -hmm. Um, So like we were just saying, like uh, Congress can pass their own uh, here in the US, like definition of things. Um, Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, we can have our own definition of piracy in the United yeah. States um, that doesn't have to exactly follow the UN Convention. Um, and according to uh, statistia.com, some other oh, yeah. statics or statistics, Jesus Christ, website, uh, in yeah. 2019, there were 162 ships attacked by pirates, wow. 195 in 2020. Uh, but contemporary piracy, many experts say, reached a peak in 2010, where there were about 445 pirate attacks. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So piracy is still a thing today. Alive and well. Uh, it's an alive and well. <laughs> it's maybe, you know, suffering a little bit. You know, it tried to pick back up in 2020. Yeah. Not sure how it's going in the last couple of years due to COVID-19, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and all the, uh, the shipping woes and exactly, whatnot around the world. Like, yeah, actually, the it seems like maybe a issues. great time to be a True. pirate. Of, that uh, could probably be part of the cause. Yeah. I, I know there's a lot of causes for all those supply chain yep. things that were going on. But <laughs> pirates, are they hey. back in action? Yeah. Not our legal advice, though, to become a pirate. No, that was yes. not. Um, no. God, not, no. Not yes. at all. No. Most of them get arrested. There, there's a reason why numbers yes. are declining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, just it's because it's like, yeah, no man's land of law doesn't mean that there aren't entities out there trying to enforce Enforcing various it, yeah. laws. So yeah. Um, Keep that in mind if you decide to drop everything and change your career path. Or if you're a yeah. pirate listening to this, email us. Let us know what it's like to be a What's pirate. What's it like? We yeah, need some evidence, some testimony. Though, yeah, that you are <laughs> yeah. a pirate. We're not just going to assume everyone who writes us is. But Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com if you are an active <laughs> pirate. <laughs> We're going to have like the FBI monitoring <laughs> and like Let the CIA know. monitoring our email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Oh, God. That's um, exactly what we want. So what does that have to do with Scooby-Doo? Yes. You, yes. Maybe ask yourself. Yes. you might I be mean, forgetting that yeah, that's why we're here today. <laughs> I'm loving, uh, I'm loving the pirate talk. But okay, great. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes. Um, well, season one, episode 14 of Scooby Doo, Where Are You from 1969, entitled Go Away, Ghost Ship, is all oh. about pirates. Okay. And our key investigative team, uh, Mystery Inc., takes vague international law, as we have just previously discussed, into their own hands to no solve way. today's mystery. Mm hmm. Mm. So let's get into it. If courts can't interpret it, then hey, maybe <laughs> Mystery Inc. can. Yep, they're on it, baby. I yeah. mean, yeah, you know Daphne's really some high-powered lawyers, oh, I'm sure. So yeah. she's probably going to drop up and become look it a over. lawyer. Yeah, yeah she's double. She's double-checked all of this stuff. <laughs> so um, we start with a peek of one of the multiple crimes that have been happening on the high seas just off the shore of Coolsville, because I guess mm-hmm. Coolsville is a sea town also. Um, again, going into the theory, potentially, are they, you know, because Texas or Florida? I mean, they were just visiting in our last episode. Um, <laughs> hokey Finocchi on Georgia, yeah. Florida border. Yeah. Um, uh, Road trips to Mexico. So yeah. Who knows? Who knows? A lot of speculation here, yeah. as usual. Um, and I, I don't actually know, I guess, if they technically are in Coolsville, but I'm assuming they are because uh, they go to their favorite malt shop that they're always frequenting. They seem to know mm-hmm. the town well. It seems yeah. like, yeah, they're, they're, they're in town. Home. Yeah. Uh, but yes, before we meet these uh, international unofficial um, representatives of Mystery Inc., uh, we meet a man who simply goes by the captain. Um, and he doesn't really need more of a name because he's the perfect picture of a high seas captain. <laughs> he's got, you know, his little like steamboat boat hat thing. He's got a pretty sharp suit on. He's got mm-hmm. like just a bit of gnarled grit and a deep respect for the sea. Um, um, and yes, uh, the weathered he, look. <laughs> exactly. He's got like kind of like the sharp cheekbones and and uh, you know the the scruff going on. And he might even have the full captain's beard. Um, and he is the captain of uh, this this ship, kind of like this uh, freight freight ship. So like shipping containers, actually. Okay. Oh, um, all right. Yeah. Mm, so time uh, that you perfect for such piracy. A thing. Yeah. Perfect right. For piracy. <laughs> Um, so even though, uh, this has happened to recent ships before him, um, he keeps on going ahead. And what this thing is, is that, uh, 
unexpected fog suddenly overtakes ships. Um, and mm. on this very night, it's a clear night for the captain. And yet a soon, soon a thick, thick fog suddenly rolls in seemingly from the horizon out of nowhere. Ooh. So all we see next uh, is another ship appearing on the other side of the fog. And this other ship, as you can expect from our discussion so far, is a quintessential pirate ship. Oh, my. Uh, like, straight out of Pirates of the Caribbean. Like wood, yes. black mask. Okay. Yes. A <laughs> like like a, among like cargo, like yes. freight ships. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a very important note is like, yeah, this is straight up like it looks like it could be out of, yeah, again, Pirates of the Caribbean. This ship has not been updated since what, the like 1600s type of thing yeah. Um, against, yeah, this like modern technology freight ship boat. Um, <laughs> Coming through the fog. Yeah, exactly. And of note, uh, this ship, yeah, has the Jolly Rogers flying high, which ah. is, yes, the skull and crossbones. Also, for everyone listening, sorry about my dogs barking in the background. We're not going to be able to edit that shit out. They're just losing no. their minds right now downstairs. They're just telling you all how much they love you and how yes. they hope that you're enjoying this podcast, but they don't realize yeah. that you're trying to listen to yeah. it. So, yeah, they, yeah, they don't understand what a podcast they're, is. They're good boys. They though. have a they're, lot to they're say. Good they're they're very good boys. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, uh, so according to my five second Google search, uh, the Jolly Rogers, again, the skull and crossbones flag was only meant to be flown on a pirate ship when they were about to attack. Oh, like, oh, so that was like a battle flag. Yeah, it was like okay. a warning signal of like, yeah. if you see a pirate ship and it's not up, like they're just going to keep <laughs> going. Oh, but if, if yeah, but up, if they put it up, run. yeah, good luck. Yeah. Or, or like, it's already too late. Steer. Probably. Not yeah. Run. You're on water. So, steer or, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, run. <laughs> Paddle away. Probably going to die. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is and no I, escape. Yeah. And I bet <laughs> that like the Jolly Rogers flag has a super cool history, Um, but I didn't keep reading. I just read the like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Wikipedia preview of what the mm. article was about in which yeah. it told me that. And then I moved on. Um, <laughs> but, that is enough for us here. Yes. Today. I said, that's good. Look at all this work about international law. I've already yes. thought about. A, yeah. We're fair done. enough. That's the more important angle. Yes, anyway. exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So on the ship, yeah, it's got the Jolly Rogers flag up high. It has cannons. It has worn sea weathered wood. It's got like huge, large sails that are a little tattered everything but most quintessentially on the deck of the ship is a man with a i must say a very fabulous bright pink suit oh. like he is glowing in his like fluorescent pirate outfit oh, yes he's a fashion pirate huh. i would say um this is this is a party pirate ship yes, this is <laughs> you see like disco fog. lights <laughs> yeah coming down everyone's wearing like pimp suits <laughs> yeah that's basically what this is this is like a yeah a, a pirate pimp outfit going on right now um but he does though somewhat clashingly i will say um have a huge red beard um luscious red hair i guess the salt water has done wonders to the hair he does have the like black like treasure island like pirate hat on also the jolly rogers on it so classic pink go very well together yes That's yep nice. exactly yeah. so he brought it back together he couldn't do anything about his beard he loved pink <laughs> doesn't always clash. It's a lot right now, but uh, yeah. So he, he's standing there and as his name implies, um, he's cackling as villains are wont to do in this show. And we flash back to our captain, the captain, uh, who exclaims, the captain, the captain. Oh, captain, captain my captain, the captain, the captain. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and he Remix. plays, <laughs> disco lights come down on the French yeah. ship as well. <laughs> uh, and so the captain exclaims that this is the ghost of Redbeard. Ah, um, so mm -hmm. it's the red beard. Yes, okay. Hence the red beard. Um, so once again, we don't actually fully see what transpires next. Um, presumably this freight ship was not well manned or at least not well prepared for a pirate attack, which does seem strange because um, there recently were pirate attacks uh, in these waters. Um, yeah. Again, not the first one in recent days, but either way, the ghost of Redbeard and his crew somehow pull up next to the ship, board it, 
overtake the captain and his men and they steal all of the goods from this freight ship. Um, Ooh, yes, yeah. very impressive. Like this little dinky wooden boat able to do this against like yeah, this enormous freight this. ship. Yeah. And but just by passing it, like, do you actually see the pirates all get on the ship or do we you just don't? So we just okay. see like the two flashes through the fog, yeah. but we do learn shortly that they, that freight ship with the captain, like was fully attacked um and all of the goods Ooh. were stolen Oof, um okay so yeah so we, we can only kind of speculate again they had cannons on the ship we don't know or on the pirate ship there were cannons yeah yeah we don't know the state of the freight ship after this attack all we know <laughs> is that like they it, they got got basically they got got <laughs> yeah by this pirate um so how does how does the gang learn about this uh through, yeah. of course, uh, the evening newspaper that runs in Coolsville. Slash they the always have a paper on them. Always. <laughs> this is like, er- Coolsville was like the pioneers of what is now Twitter, of like the constant news feed, apparently. They <laughs> exactly. are turning out papers And the left teens and right. are with it. They are yes. always on top of what's going on. Yep, around exactly. town and around the world, apparently. Yes, due to said paper. Uh, so the Coolsville malt shop, um, almost everyone actually is reading a newspaper, uh, very intellectual of them. And they mm-hmm. spot this article where the captain who uh, has, was eventually rescued, came back to shore. Um, he So he was not murdered by the pirates, which is a good thing. That's good. Yeah. Not always the case. I think he probably was like, these goods are not worth my life. Like, <laughs> take the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've been through World War II and now this shit? Like, I don't think so. Mm-mm, I'm not going to get killed by some ghost pirates. <laughs> yeah, not today. No, that's um, not how I'm going out. Yep. So in the the Coolsville newspaper article, the captain explains, kind of goes into a little more what happens. um, And we get a quote from the owner of the freight company, C.L. Magnus. Um, who is being, I will say, a very supportive employer. Like, he's okay. not saying, like, no, like, my captain is making up ghost pirates and fog. He is fully blaming the attack on the ghost of Redbeard, mm. saying we need more security out there, basically, like, these high seas are not safe. Like my, uh, this is not my first ship that's been attacked. Like we're just trying to get these goods through. We're trying to do our job and like, we need to amp up the security and essentially like the captain knows his shit. I fully believe him and trust him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, good. Not all employers are like that. Uh, so ever the savvy businesswoman with her finger all on the pulse, Daphne explains that Magnus company, yep, Mm -hmm. she does. And she knows Mm -hmm. and explains to the group that Magnus's company is actually teetering on bankruptcy and going out of business. So Mm -hmm. kind of similar actually to your last episode of like a family run business on the brink of destruction, essentially. Uh, mystery Inc. Sorry, quick, yeah, <laughs> quick interruption they're, here. They're, they support small business. <laughs> we, exactly. We solve mysteries. We investigate. Yeah. We do small business restoration. Yes. Here's our car. We <laughs> do it all, baby. <laughs> yeah, it here's all. our card. <laughs> Let's it's... put on our consultant hats and figure out how we can <laughs> yeah. save your business. <laughs> right, exactly. Because clearly you need the saving. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so she explains, yeah, that Magnus is freight shipping container business is uh, on the brink of uh, bankruptcy hmm. and the gang full of sympathy about the recent pirate afflictions uh, decide, yeah, they should. And I guess the fact that they have the sympathy for the small failing business, they yeah. decide they should offer their services to CL Magnus. Um, okay. So how did they offer these services? Did they write <laughs> him a letter? Did they find his number in the phone book and call him? Did that they ask to normal Daphne's parents who probably are business connection to, to Magnus somehow Part drop into his something. yeah drop into his offices during business hours no uh the well-connected Daphne just so happened to know where he lived uh and they knew their services cannot wait yeah Daphne is an insider of That's, all of the happenings of yeah Coolsville. apparently this um, bitch he's, knows. He's probably, if he, you know, is the owner of this large freight shipping company, I'm mm-hmm. sure that, yes, like you said, he rubs elbows with the rich yeah. and the wealthy and the powerful. Exactly. And, you know, maybe she's been to a holiday party at his house or something. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe they're on the Christmas card list. 
probably from his family. Yeah, Somehow, I mean, we're going to assume it's not creepy at all that she knows this yes, dude's address. We're assume it's <laughs> not. Um, yes. You know, yeah, I like that idea. I think that uh I mean, based on the fact that it's now a failing business, that it's just the Christmas card list. They don't go to his Christmas parties yeah, anymore. Yeah, they yeah. just they just get his card stone sometimes. Yeah. Every other year they'll send him one if they remember. <laughs> um so uh yeah, I mean like their services they knew couldn't wait, which in a way is good business, mm-hmm. you know. Mr. Inc. knows there could be a competing detective service out there, you know, like local cops. Uh, and they wanted to get out <laughs> ahead of this. Uh, Competitors. Yeah, exactly. Legal authorities. Yes. Um, including and especially because, uh, you know, I think we can operate under the assumption that this is indeed piracy on the high seas, yeah. um, that the FBI or the UN would step in. And Mr. Inc. knows that is too many cooks in the kitchen. We got to get at this first, you know. <laughs> they like to keep a tight investigation. Yeah. They don't, yeah. Yeah, they don't close. share. They don't share the information with other investigators. And because it's on the high seas, anyone could come up and start uh, taking control of this investigation. True. There are no rules. It's like a first come first serve situation. So um, <laughs> yeah, they going to be there first. So the gang rolls up to Magnus's building. That, speaking of other episodes, could have very well been one of the buildings in your uh, your high rise hair raiser Ebenezer Crab episode oh, because yeah. he lives on the top floor, the penthouse of this oh. fancy ass building. Happens um, to have a uh, Jim Rivets and Red Sparks as neighbors. <laughs> they could have been. Maybe they could have been. <laughs> his um, was one of the safes that was burglarized. Yeah, I mean, probably that's probably why his business is failing now. Um, and he actually, we know he's in the penthouse because on the outside of his door is a golden plate that says "C.L. Magnus Penthouse." Yes. Um, so uh, I will I will pause to give the gang credit that they don't just like bust into his apartment as we know mm-hmm. they love to do. They love breaking and entering, trespassing. Uh, but they know this is like way too nice of a place to pull this shit. Yeah. Daphne is probably like, not today, peasants. This guy actually probably has money to sue us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my lawyers will cover me, but not your but poor y'all asses. Are so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the door comes a man like straight out of the Adams family. Um, we also only hear him referred to as the butler. Um, mm. I think again, this is a Richie Rich episode, only yeah. like the rich people have names, all of like everyone who <laughs> works for them are just like the butler, the captain, even though the captain like is traumatized. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh the butler is this like it's this strange mixture of he's like at the same time, like seven feet tall, but also like slightly hunched back situation. Mm. He's got he's like a skeleton. So he would be like man. eight feet tall if he stood up straight. Yeah, if he stood yeah. up straight. He'd have like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, some <laughs> hunch going on. Um, but yeah, definitely looks like Fester or someone out of that Adam's family. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. But yeah, his face, man, I gotta say, I hate to just be like this man is so ugly and crazy looking, but like it is droopy and full of wrinkles and just like gaunt. Mm. Yeah, he's got like ba- bags under his eyes and like creaks open the door. So he's just like all elements of creepy, essentially. He's, he's been through it. <laughs> yeah, he's been through some shit lately, yeah. it seems mm-hmm. like. Um, and he immediately, yeah, he opens the door and like you can, again, see it in his eyes of like, why the fuck's sake are these children at my door? And then it's probably <laughs> like, oh, Miss Blake is here. But he does. I have to let them in. Yeah, they, they immediately are like, well, we're here to see CL Magnus. And he very politely, I will say, points out that it is 11 at night. <laughs> he literally going to ask what time it is. Yes, it's like, it why is are they here late at PM. night? Yeah. Um, so where are their parents? We don't know. <laughs> he probably, he probably looks like shit because he was just woken up out of bed. <laughs> type of thing um to answer oh, this yeah. door we're being we're being uh wrongfully yeah. judgmental yes exactly yeah. i need to throw that out there um yeah. so he does he yeah declines the help right now he's like it's 11 at night y'all need to go home he's probably like daphne i'm about to call your butler and like have <laughs> your come, chauffeur get, yeah get a car to come pick you up um so they go home just kidding no they don't uh, <laughs> they are so deeply they offended you? that they were turned away uh <laughs> so quickly they they slip on somehow very bad disguises to look like room service or like the maid service of this apartment complex and they 
burst back like they bust into the apartment like there's like a full like you know like room service like cart that they just like tear down the door <laughs> i'm pretty sure they roll over the butler perhaps even oh my god um who is clearly like this what the hell is going on with this i'm calling the fucking police <laughs> exactly like <laughs> we're committing a crime and i am going to take care of it that is my job um yes. But Magnus, luckily, is still up. He's sitting by the fireplace, enjoying, presumably, you know, a glass of scotch. And he's got, like, the fancy, mm-hmm. like, velvet robe on. Yes, uh, and again, is. presumably, I would assume that most likely he would also be like, let's call the cops. But sees Daphne and says, oh, the young Miss Blake. I can't just turn her family away. Um, they they control mm-hmm. all of the money in Coolsville, and I am strapped for cash. Let's mm-hmm. see what she wants. Um, so he does, you know... Uh, offer the teens a seat uh and uh is open to hearing why they want to help out with this investigation um the butler like butler is just seething in the corner over this entire situation um magnus for his part uh is kind of just like a nondescript rich white dude. Uh, again, full robe in the fire, kind of balding, healthily plump for a life lived comfortably. Yes. Um, Lots of and, and lobster consumed. Yes, exactly. Um, and he's pretty clearly actually desperate. FBI has maybe not done too much yet. UN is like, we have much bigger fish to fry than your couple acts of piracy that happened on your ship. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. So Magnus is not getting any help. Um So he immediately actually opens up to the teens um, who, by the way, like I've realized and noticed they don't take any notes when they're hearing about like what's happening. They just like hear about it. They just like stand up and nod and are like, okay, we got it. Thanks. Bye. Which maybe like (laughs) they're young. And so they have better memory, like I don't know, short-term retention or something, but like, yeah, we know Shaggy probably has some issues with (laughs) that, with his, uh, his, his hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, uh, yeah, that's just a little thing I noticed that's in this funny. episode. Yeah. Um, good point. So, yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's maybe, I guess, impressive more than anything. So, um, True. Yeah. yeah. They're so, young. Yeah, yeah they got brain it. cells are still, yeah. Yep. Yeah, still intact. helping. Uh, so the attacks on his freight ships, um, because, again, there have been more than one, mm-hmm. uh, he explains and sees it as an act of revenge, actually, by the ghost of Redbeard. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ooh, okay. um, and he Bold knows. Claim. Yep. And, you know, it's coming out strong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And again, he knows this is the ghost of Redbeard because the captain is the one who saw it with his own eyes. So due to the amount of wealth that Magnus still has, I kind of assume that like his family 300 years ago uh, must have been like further naval captains at the time, you know, Mm -hmm. magistrates, Mm -hmm. like general law enforcement and like businessmen of the early arrival of England to the United States um, Mm. and such. The old establishment. Yes, we won't get into Mm -hmm. all of that. But um, his family, his ancestors hunted down Redbeard and his crew and brought them all to justice with their own hands. I assume probably a pretty violent justice because that's how it went back then. Again, we've all seen Pirates of the Caribbean when like Jack Sparrow is like pulling into the port and there's just like pirates hanging everywhere. So um. Yeah, I have to assume it was equally dark, Um, but just before, (laughs) yeah, the chop or whatever came down on Redbeard, he vowed revenge on Magnus's entire family. Oh, no. Yep, a revenge that Magnus believes he is now getting incited on him. We have learned many times from this show that you do not want revenge to be laid Mm -hmm. on you and people you care about Uh -uh. from ancient figures. It will come back to haunt you in the future. (laughs) Yep, maybe... Like call your grandparents and that type of stuff just to like mm-hmm. check if there's been any curses Anywhere. on your family that you should yeah, be aware anything of. like that. Like locusts yeah. just randomly appearing in their house. Yeah, like something. double check that they didn't yeah. piss any uh, piss anyone off. Ancient who would have gods are ancient. To do yeah, this. Exactly. Exactly. No spirits. No evil demons. Whatever. Anyway. Yep. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah. And the butler throughout this entire like exposition is either unmoved by the tale because he's heard it before, or he's yeah. simply like festering this intrusion of privacy which it's makes like, sense. why are they here why yep. did you let these kids in exactly They're clearly trespassing <laughs> yeah get these get them the fuck out of here uh <laughs> fred however has heard enough he lets pa- magnus know like we've got this in the bag we're gonna head out right now and put an end to this um yeah. no contract was signed but i guess you know since it's on the high seas every part of this operation will remain lawless um, all handshake deals <laughs> yeah exactly which you know again is the gang style either way so it mm-hmm. makes sense uh yeah. 
So I broke this down kind of step by step of how we're going to go through, how we're going to solve this act of piracy. So step one, hit the seas, because how do you catch a pirate if you don't get out to the water? You, you don't. Yeah. Uh, so the gang <laughs> hops on like this tiny wooden speedboat. Uh, it just has like, yeah, like an engine on the back and they zip out to see uh, Fred at the helm because this is all his plan. Uh, uh, oh, they got, yep, they got presumably from Magnus the schedule of the freight ships or maybe Magnus like had his butler go fetch it for him or from the captain. Either way, they know the schedule of the freight ships. They got the intel uh, from the company. Uh, Afty's like taking pictures to send <laughs> to their competitors. Like, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Or like her parents are like trying to open a front shipping company. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is actually a a major ruse by the Blake family (laughs) to like get all of. That's why Daphne's involved in Mystery Inc. to begin with. Is that she's just a corporate spy? Yeah, exactly. But a very good one, apparently. (laughs) So, um, yes, she now has this. She has the Finocchi Fizz formula. (laughs) Sorry from my last episode. episode. Oh yeah, Yeah. and the uh, Cookie Cola recipes. She She took both both of them down, baby. This is how Blake Incorporated gets so big. They just steal information from other companies constantly. All right. Yes, they know anyway. how this world works. Yes. Um, <laughs> probably since, again, 300 years ago as well, they were probably rolling it then. Mm-hmm. So uh, they they also know, the gang also knows from, you know, speaking with the captain and Magnus, that uh, the pirate ship only appears after this that thick ghostly fog rolls across the water. Um, so as they're out on the, on the water, the gang, they see the freight ship. Okay, great. It's on schedule. And they see the fog start to form. And so this is when Fred enacts his plan. So they speed directly towards the fog, which is now in the opposite direction of the freight ship. And they blow a fog horn as a decoy. They're okay. hoping that the fog is thick enough that it'll block the vision of the skilled pirates from seeing the enormous freight ship and yeah. a tiny little like schooner ship or whatever. I don't know. Fog, ships well. fog tests even the most, yes. the most weathered pirates or sailors. Exactly. Sometimes. Exactly. If the fog is thick enough and there's a fog horn, so you can hear it either way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. Um, I do want to note that it's, you know, the classic, like the animators needed to show how thick the fog was. And so to do this, they gave Scooby-Doo a knife. Like uh, we straight up just see him like, you know, cut through the fog, which I get like so thick. You can yeah. cut it with a knife, but literally uh, it like pauses and Scooby just like has a knife in his hand, <laughs> <laughs> which like, I think I interpret this as Scooby knows the high seas aren't a place to fuck around. Like He's ready. He knows this is lawless. He came um, strapped. Yeah, um, exactly. That would be one of those things. It's like Scooby Doo out of context. <laughs> you just like yeah. put a picture of him holding a nice. knife. Like, yep. oh, what yeah. is he about to do? Yeah, maybe I'll put that up on our social media <laughs> at Satmore Mist. Come yeah. follow us. You'll see a Scooby with Twitter the knife. Instagram. Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, so this plan obviously seems a little silly, but by golly, it works. <laughs> um, but as it goes sometimes, sometimes it works too well because oh, no. the pirate ship turns towards them. And it starts to head towards them and it starts to head towards them full speed ahead, like not pausing at all. Oh um, so oh they, the gang obviously starts to panic about yes. this. Um, and in the panic, the engine on the speedboat breaks off entirely. Um, so they have no motorized way to get away. So Shaggy stuck in and, the middle of the yep, ocean, stuck in the middle of the international <laughs> waters in the ocean with a, giant oh full-size pirate ship speeding towards them at full speed mm-hmm. uh shaggy Who clearly and velma, is angry with them yes shaggy mm-hmm. and velma are like trying to paddle with their hands they trying to get out of those like the path of the pirate ship they can't it's coming in too fast and then bam the pirate ship rams directly into them and cracks the speedboat in half uh, uh, uh. No, holy no, 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 no. yep 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 i don't know how you this... feel about the ocean <laughs> seems not well <laughs> you know how I feel about the ocean. You know yeah. what one of my biggest fears is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, yes. I would not. No. Next thing yeah, you know, a giant hell. whale is next <laughs> to you and it's the end of the world. I'm not saying I would never do it, yeah. but I, I, it would take a lot of pep yes. talking and yes. like slapping me <laughs> out of crying and everything. Like yep. the whales won't hurt you. <laughs> they can't get you the here. Whales, but <laughs> 
here. Which anyways, aren't actually so, whales, aren't, by the way. Yeah. Aren't they like They're, a type of shark or something? Um, technically, or like they are a type of dolphin. Okay. Yes. That's right. So that makes them a little friendlier, maybe. Probably not to you. Anyways, probably not to most people. When they don't sense blood. But yes. Mm. <laughs> anyway, step two in solving this anyway, problem. Yes, anyway, anyway. Is now to board the ship because they're all in the middle of the ocean with nowhere else to go. And I assume that was like probably their plan in the first place was to board the ship because otherwise they were just going to like blow the foghorn a bunch and then like ask Redbeard to just like stop pirating ships. It's unclear. Either way, uh, they get onto the ship. Um, and luckily the gang, you know, and they're, they're actually split on like each side of the ship. Like they're not all together, which is also terrifying. I will say. Yeah. Uh, but luckily the gang is young and in shape to the point that they're able to scale the sides of the ship, um, oh which is very impressive. Like as someone yeah. who does climb, uh, like how the, how the fuck would you scale the a side shit? of a wooden yeah. yeah i don't know but it's very impressive, impressive. yeah <laughs> you see them like so. climbing up in the middle of the darkness yeah <laughs> yeah yep. yeah it's not a lit up ship it's a dark ass pirate ship so uh, shaggy and scooby go on one side they actually climb through some windows fred velmy and da- uh, velma and daphne uh go up onto the actual deck um mm-hmm. so anyways step two check on the ship uh yeah. step three search for clues as per usual Okay. So we're going to start with uh, the kind of failed side of things uh, on the search <laughs> for clues. There's all, no one's, no one, you know, Failures that's, abound. With yeah, them. exactly. So um, as you can maybe assume, that side is with Shaggy and Scooby. Um, mm-hmm. They just so happened to have tumbled into Redbeard's actual cabin when they boarded the ship. Um, and it seems peaceful enough and like kind of undisturbed which i mean like i guess if he's a ghost that makes sense um and they continue their search so kind of like rifling through his shit uh until from a portrait of red beard hanging up in his own room um a straight up sword like flies out of it and starts to chase them down like it is just flying through the air actively like slicing and like stabbing towards them a ghost sword essentially yes. yeah yep. so just i like... was gonna say there's okay yep there's no red beard with it um and i guess this is a clue but just kind of i guess confirming that like some ghostly shit is going down um yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously else. yeah they like run away the the sword gets caught in a the door they book it out of there um but the the problem and like failure aspect of this is that they run directly into the ghost of Redbeard and two and he's other. He's like, oh, thanks for bringing me my sword. Yeah, I was looking for this. I, just, <laughs> Thank you. I left in my room again. Now I can kill you for real. Yeah, and now I will really stab you. Um, and they yeah run into Redbeard and two other pirates who look like they just got off of like captain hook's boat from peter pan like the animated (laughs) version they're like huge like gruff looking dudes but they're wearing like cut off shorts and like striped shirts and bandanas and like a bunch of different colors honestly the three of them together look like the village people's interpretation (laughs) of pirates like it is very fabulous it is very flamboyant and colorful and like would hang out with them the strip club uh, version of yeah. uh, pirate outfits. Yeah, exactly. Like High they, cut off shorts. Yeah, yeah, they got the George booty, booty pirate shorts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like straight from 70s disco era oh, type of thing. Um, and I mean, kind of smartly without a fight, uh, they get captured. Um, but again, mm. like kind of darkly, we've noticed there's a lot of like little dark things within Scooby-Doo overall. Redbeard, as he's saying, like if they basically like if you don't pull your weight on the ship or find a good reason for me to keep you and he does the like you know thumb across the neck or like oh. finger across the neck basically saying like i will slit your throat unless like <laughs> yeah you prove your worth um oh and that my friend is how shaggy and scooby end up in the galley aka kitchen of the ship cooking for the ghost pirates oh okay Yes. And that they was got their a good contribution. Gig. Yeah, yep, they're exactly. like, okay, what's one thing we can do that will show we are not worthless? Yep, literally uh, Shaggy's like, we kitchen. can cook. And they yeah. were like, great, get in there. Um, so while they're cooking for their lives, which sounds like a very fun cooking for their lives. Like great cooking show for food network. Oh no. Yeah. Cook for your I mean, lives. That too, but like a cooking show in which they literally have to cook for their lives or else like they're gonna die <laughs> or something Ramsey will kill them <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> yep um yeah I, I could see that show being like gordon Ramsay, like guy fiere fiere 
and yeah. like I don't know Bobby Flay or something like Sorry, that. Sorry, random. You just, you mentioned Guy Fieri, so I yeah. got to say it. He was just in Cincinnati a couple of days oh, ago really? doing more episodes. <gasps> yeah, of Triple D. He loves Cincinnati. Yeah, he loves it there. So a little hometown shout out. And yes, now we have another reason to love Guy Fieri. Anyway, yes, he he would totally be a judge on this show. Yeah, I would love it. And like every time, like I don't know, like Gordon Ramsay would like whoever was about to be eliminated like turn like the full power of like the sun onto them to burn them alive <laughs> guy would just like turn his sunglasses from the back of his head onto his front of his head so <laughs> he doesn't get blinded yeah, exactly. <laughs> um anyways uh while they're cooking for their lives Velma, Daphne and Fred have scanned the whole top deck and they've found nothing and no one I don't know how the ship is being steered I guess by ghostly powers or something yeah. um But overall, they're, like, very unimpressed. Like, Velma, Fred, and Daphne are literally, like, joking about the situation. They're like, this is a joke. This is some mix-up. Like, this is, (laughs) like, they're laughing as they, like, start to, like, walk down into, like, a lower deck. But, like, just as they're doing that, they actually see Redbeard walking Mm -hmm. kind of on the other side of some cargo. Uh, And so they immediately jump and hide and are like, oh, shit. This yeah, got real. Them. Yeah, he did not see yeah. him. This like, got real. Not, real not a quick. joke anymore. Yep, 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 yep. yep, yep. <laughs> Laughing stops. We yeah, lie. just a pin okay. drop type of thing. Um, but yeah. when they obviously somewhat smartly and I maybe stupidly are like, okay, well, obviously that's our target. Uh, but they try it, they pop back out and they try and find them, and Redbeard is nowhere to be found. Um, but luckily, uh, this attempt to track down Redbeard again leads them to their actual first solid clue. Oh. So, yep, they find themselves in one of the cabins, uh, and there's these huge, like, I don't know, it, it looks like it was, like, would have been from, like, a wine barrel or, like, cask or something that have been, like... What is up with all the barrels? In cut in show? half. Barrels yeah. are a classic trope. They can do everything. True. You can trip over them. You can put people in them. Exactly. Or they you can, can shatter them yeah. with the dry ice, which is the case in this scenario. Oh, um, I'm pretty they... sure Velma or someone, for sure it's Velma's like, don't touch that. Like, it's dry ice. Like, it'll burn your hands hmm. type yeah, of thing. She which, knew. Yeah, exactly. Which it will do. Fun fact. Um, yeah. <laughs> dry ice, a great tool for Halloween. My mom used to do that every year on her front porch. Oh, is, man. She, yeah, yep. she used to do the best best halloween decorations yeah, yeah your house is look the awesome halloween queen yes dry ice everywhere it was amazing um like <laughs> human-sized skeletons hangs from, yep. hanging from the trees and stuff exactly yeah, yeah. not at like, all terrifying yep Absolutely and like terrifying. we wonder why i'm into crime and dark things and <laughs> do we don't have to look very far anyways yeah. mm-hmm. so as they're about to investigate further uh redbeard they actually see redbeard in the doorway and they're like oh shit and he slams the door shut and locks it from the other side. Oh, God. So, yeah. So now they're, like, fully locked into yeah. this cabin. Um, oh, boy. Yep. Not, not be terrifying. looking good for them. Uh, so on the other side, Shaggy and Scooby are able to use funny distractions uh, to actually escape their cap- captors and run for it. Although they are still on the middle of a ship in the middle of the ocean. So I'm not sure where. They're going to go. They also don't know how to man or steer a pirate ship, I have to assume. Quick learners. But anyways, exactly. Uh, they do realize... <laughs> if this random spirit that's guiding it now mm-hmm. can do it, then so can We can do it, damn it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, they are smart in realizing all of this and realize their best bet is to kind of like, you know, art of destruction and throw them off the trail. Um, and so Shaggy kind of just finds like, you know, this piece of paper on like a desk in like one of the cabins and folds it up into a pirate's hat and he uses shadows and ventriloquism which we know shaggy is good at mm-hmm. uh because yeah. the other pirates uh village people pirates are coming around the corner <laughs> and so he uses like yeah uh shadows and deception to sound like red beard and order them around to a different part of the ship mm-hmm. um which uh works like they are like you got it captain and they go <laughs> the other direction um me yeah and so yeah shaggy and scooby are like okay well we just gotta lay low i guess until we get to shore so they hop into a barrel and are again barrels and are like okay let's like move this barrel a little bit so we can like hide in the corner um but instead of physically moving the barrel on the outside to somewhere else they get in the barrel and then move which leads them to walk themselves right off the plank uh (laughs) in said barrel um And as soon as they splash into the water, the ghost pirate ship starts to head in another direction towards its real destination. So Shaggy and Scooby are sitting there like using like broken pieces of wood somehow, I guess, from their destroyed ship to like 
paddle after them. They know their friends are still on and they're like, oh shit, we got to at least get our friends back. Yeah. Um, and so we quickly learned that this, the ship is headed towards its real destination for the evening. Uh, the secret cove at Skull Island. Oh goodness. Yep. Oh boy. Which uh. as you can imagine is named as such because it looks like you guessed it, a giant skull. It was actually like pretty cool. Like yeah. the mouth of it is the cave entrance. Um, it's all like jungly on the side. Like mm-hmm. it's a pretty cool Island. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm thinking now I, <laughs> I know I mentioned a couple episodes back. Well, I don't know if we kept that part in the episode or not, <laughs> but how much I love King Kong movie or uh, oh. Godzilla movies. And <laughs> yeah, yes, King, King Kong is from Skull Island. Yep. So I'm like, oh shit, these teens do not know what they're about to get into some fights with some ginormous prehistoric type yep. creatures that are coming Again, from the center of the earth on the Skull Island anyway. International waters, anything can happen. <laughs> anything goes. At this point. Anything goes. Yep. <laughs> so this brings us to step four of the investigation. Be resourceful. So again, Shaggy and Scooby already being resourceful. By the way, they're paddling, yep, uh, with all their might. And they're mm-hmm. able to sneak in behind the ship undetected. Um, and while they're doing that, you know, it takes them a little longer to get there. Obviously, they're on an enormous pirate ship. Um, yes. Velma, Daphne, and Fred are led off the ship, I assume blindfolded, and are led like deeper into this like winding cab, like labyrinth of a cave. Mm -hmm. Um, And they stand fully chained together. Um, I will say at first, my first watch of this, because I watched them multiple times, I thought they were like just chained by their hands and they could just like run away at any time. (laughs) And I was like, this is hilarious. Like what is happening? Uh, But I I noticed uh, on the second watch through that the chains are then chained onto the the cave wall. So like they are actually kind of fully secured on there. Um, And and absolutely terrifying. Yes. And it got like from like, haha, they could just run away to like, oh fuck. And then it got (laughs) doubly terrifying. Yeah. Because then Redbeard did the same. I'm going to slit your throat as he tells them you're going to join my crew which again as a ghost crew and the slitting of the throats they are now chained in international water i guess let's let's go small to big they are chained in Mm -hmm. a cave in Mm -hmm. a labyrinth of caves on a place Mm -hmm. called skull island Mm -hmm. that they got to on a pirate ghost ship in international waters where their parents don't know where they are, probably. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, do their so, parents even know that they took this mission? Probably not. I guess ma- this mission. Never. <laughs> <laughs> do you accept this mission, Miss Reek? Yeah, um, you have no yeah, choice I guess, doing it. I guess maybe besides in our in our embellished version of mm-hmm. the story, besides Daphne's parents, yeah, no. They have no nope. clue. <laughs> no not one knows that their kids are there besides the Blakes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and apparently no one's been able to track down this pirate ship to begin with, so they ain't gonna be found. Yeah, even if um, you do know where they are, you have no idea yeah, your <laughs> where Skull Island is. Yeah, so your international waters, there are thousands upon thousands of random islands everywhere in the ocean. We mm. know less about, this is add to your fear of the ocean we know less about our ocean than we do space exactly. so like sit with that for a little yeah, bit i guess you're never gonna find them yeah exactly okay. um and so uh you know i guess redbeard needs to go get like the implements of murder ready or something like that so he leaves um and luckily fred is apparently extremely resourceful because mm-hmm. i don't know i guess from his pocket He pulls a stack of straws and he sticks them on one on top of the other. And then I guess he was from the malt shop earlier. Oh, oh, you know what? Is Fred a kleptomaniac? (laughs) (laughs) It's like (laughs) the rest of the group is like leaving the malt shop. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. Steals a bunch of straws and like stuffs them in his sweatshirt. (laughs) Straws of all things to steal. (laughs) <laughs> wow um, yeah i mean i guess this confirms it though like fred is a little yeah. klepto uh because yeah he because it's not just like here's one straw it's like a stack of straws what yeah were they so, wrapped were they like just like <laughs> a literal just like open? unclear i guess i guess or he would just unwrap them on the spot but then he would just have like a pile of the wrappers which is not very 
uh, sneaky of how you escape. Um, yeah, you like a, a trail of trash behind <laughs> you. <laughs> exactly. Hmm, I think they went that way. Yep, I would assume so. So uh, yeah, uh, either way, anyway. <laughs> little klepto Fred. Yeah, stacks all the straws like one on top of the other. He apparently was chewing gum because then he uses it on like one end of his straw tower and uses the stickiness of the gum to like on a desk that we now see that has a set of keys on it that they can't reach because they're attached to the wall. He uses the straws as like a stick and reaches the keys (laughs) with the gum until it like sticks on and then just brings it back to himself. Resourceful as heck. I Very. would say he fit yeah. a lot of straws into his pocket. Yes, that you know, there were legitimately a lot of straws. Uh, so they get free <laughs> immediately. They run, but they kind of get lost in the cave system. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, who else should be lost in this cave system? But good old Shaggy and Scooby who of were course. there to rescue them. Um, but instead of saying like, hey, thanks for coming to rescue us. Actually, of note from your last episode, which if y'all haven't heard yet, go back and listen and come back to this episode. Uh, the gang is kind of mean sometimes because <laughs> Shaggy this whole time is still wearing his like paper hat that he wore, and I think it He's might probably be, so proud of it. Yeah. I think it was Velma actually who yelled at Shaggy in the last episode, who's like, "Shaggy, get that weird hat off your head. Why are you wearing that?" Um, yeah, yeah starting so, to realize she's not that nice. Yeah, so she <laughs> says it like very meanly. And then I think when she, like, he hands it to her and I think she plays it off as if she wasn't being mean because she sees something on the other side of the hat that mm. I think she's like, I, I saw that. I wanted to check it out. But I think yeah. she was just no, like, no, the like hat's cool idiot. and all. But yeah. yeah, there's a clue on it. Yep, exactly. So, uh, like mm-hmm. I mentioned, back to the clues, which is our step five or regressing to our other earlier step three, because mm-hmm. uh, this piece of origami hat is actually a really <laughs> major clue. Oh. So what Shaggy unknowingly snagged from that cabin on the pirate ship was the entire, like, I don't know what to call it, like a work plan or like upcoming log and schedule of the freight ships, including mm-hmm. the schedule of that night and the value of all of the goods on each ship. So, oh. yeah. So, basically, they realized this Shaggy is how... didn't notice any of this information <laughs> no. while he no. was holding it? Okay. Nope. He folded yeah. it very quickly. He didn't even... He probably didn't even need to look at it while he's folding nah, it. exactly. He's also very good at origami, I guess. Yeah. And colloquialism, <laughs> gymnastics, origami. Shaggy does it all, ladies it all. and gentlemen. <laughs> and, uh, and everything in between. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. Um, so uh, this is how Redbeard, they deduce, has been able to plan his pirating adventures is because he has had access to everything that the targets have been up to. Mm-hmm. He knows when they're coming, whether they're a worthwhile target or not, because he knows the value of the goods on the ship. Yeah. Um, so it's time to find a way out there. Like they read this sheet and they're like, okay, great. We're still stuck in a cavern with like this straight up murderous pirate uh, that could be on our trail at any second, maybe because of the trash trail of straws Fred left. Um, so uh, they apparently uh, literally just look around for an exit and they didn't realize it earlier. You know, their eyes peel back a little more because they find their next clue and hopefully an exit uh, because in the dirt and sand, I guess, of this cave are tire tracks. Uh, oh. So, yep, they get Scooby, the hound dog, on the case to follow the scent and the tracks okay. for them um, until they abruptly end at a treasure chest on brand. Pirate episode. <laughs> the, tri- the tire tracks just end at the yes. treasure yep. Okay, They mm. literally just stop. Uh, so the chest bursts open and, like, this skeleton, it's, like, very weird it's like just like the uh what is it like the spine bones and like skull there's no like rest there's no like rib cage or rest of the arms arms and stuff it's just like the spine and skull uh with like a little piratey bandana on it again (laughs) very fashion cute so it it's like a jack-in-the-box essentially like how but yeah okay exactly a a skeleton jack-in-the-box yep uh so it springs forth and asks that's also like absolutely traumatically terrifying yes by the way yeah that you're just um, like focus 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 tire tracks and it ends. <laughs> holy shit in your face Skeleton. like uh yeah 
armless, legless, limbless, whatever skeleton. Yes, anyway. Exactly. Oof. And that's speaking to you, asking for a password. It's talking. Yes. Okay. Um, oh so where did the tire tracks come from? Who was driving? Why did they descend into this treasure chest? Oh, is there a car on is... an island in the middle of the ocean? Yep. Yeah. How did that get there? Why is the skeleton yeah. ghost thing asking for a password? Yeah. So uh the gang decides questions. to uh, just try different pirate catchphrases that they know. Uh, some of which are 16 men on a pirate's chest. I don't know what that one means. Yo, ho, ho, blow the man down. I've never really heard of that exact one. I don't know. Um, and then for some reason, uh, Shaggy says, yum, 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 and a liverwurst a la mode. And then behind I... the treasure chest, a door opens. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, I don't mm-hmm. know a lot about pirate <laughs> terminology, mm-hmm. but I am not. Well, no, I'm not going to make any bold claims anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> There's no point. Uh, but yeah, I uh, agree. I don't think any of that is a pirate's uh, of, phrase. I think he was just hungry. Why would they have of worse? the three phrases they said? That one seems to me to be the le- the least piratey. Yes, but oh well. Which hey, I guess works makes it a good password. Exactly. Actually. I was say maybe that was the point. Yes. That, yeah. Now, how Shaggy happened to know the exact words, <laughs> yeah. including adding on all mode at the end, <laughs> <laughs> saying brain. saying yum the perfect note. Yep. Yum 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 like three times. Yep. Wow. It wasn't yes. just yum in liver. Yum yum yum, <laughs> yum. liverwurst. A la mode. Shaggy, um, he knows all this stuff. He's good. Yep, exactly. So this cave wall behind them just suddenly opens. Um, it's basically like a voice activated like garage door, more or less. Uh Velma, as they like then like look at the skeleton thing, we're like, oh, there's just a voice box in there. So uh behind the wall that they do see the tire tracks continue into. Um, cause they thought they just stopped at the, the treasure chest, but they actually, it was just blocked off because of the wall oh, right okay. there that they gotcha. couldn't see anymore. Um, so behind the wall is an even bigger, enormous cavern whose walls and floor is absolutely lined with shipping crates and containers and goods. Mm. And so is this, this wasn't the most obvious clue in the world that, you know, this is where all the goods are going to. And like, we're confirming our suspicions, uh, is that they actually see Redbeard and the two pirates loading some crates onto a truck near the, an exit of the cavern. Okay. Um, and, you know, so they're like, that's... oh shit, they got, yeah. they got loose, like, uh-oh. So Redbeard like hits a garage door button somewhere, I guess, and like shuts the door behind them. Pardon me, so that everyone is now trapped in here. Um, oh God. I will say like a very weird, like, chase ensues that i would like to describe certain aspects of okay please yes so first and foremost the ghost sword reappears uh to chase down and slice at (laughs) shaggy and scooby you see it like fly out of the ship and like navigating through (laughs) the (laughs) cave cave. yeah i feel like that's what happens for some reason like in aladdin with like the carpet (laughs) or something yeah Yeah. (laughs) um and uh yeah it's starting to like slash at scooby and shaggy and they like jump into this closet thing and it's like stabbing in and it reminds me of the suicide booth from Futurama. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, like getting stabbed at. How Um, would you like to die? Yeah, exactly. You are now dead. You are now dead. Thank you. Um, And apparently everyone like hit the jackpot of what was like the most recently opened uh, shipping container because they like open up the lid or Velma, Fred and Daphne do. And it's a shipping container full of like prank weapons. So like, for example, Velma, Daphne and Fred have like bow and arrows, but instead of like an actual arrow, it's like a toilet plunger uh, (laughs) that they're like shooting at like the henchman pirates, um, which I think actually actually can be helpful. I don't know if you watch Hawkeye, (laughs) if you watch Hawkeye on Disney Plus. I'm not. He had a plunger arrow and it came in clutch when he needed it, let me tell you. (laughs) I mean, maybe they were inspired by this. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and then Shaggy tries to threaten Redbeard with this, like, a gun, but it's like an egg beater at the end of it and, like, stand mixer, I guess. Um, and then he Get grabs the skillets. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then in another flashback moment uh, that you'll soon realize in a second, Shaggy and Scooby grab because they're like, uh, Red Beard is now trying to stab at us. Let's like distance ourselves. And he yeah. goes, Scooby, come on to this automatic pogo stick with me. And it turns out it's just a jackhammer. 
not like an automatic pogo stick. It's like a straight up a jackhammer, which like goes back to our second episode in which Shaggy and Scooby worked on a construction site with no supervision. No more power tools for those two. Yeah. Fred, maybe, but Shaggy and Scooby, yes. no, no, no. Yep, exactly. So anyways, uh, through a series of clambering in and around all of the cargo, they're able to trip Redbeard, who po- topples into just a giant pile of tires that I guess were in one of the crates too i mean you gotta ship shit so like whatever no wonder it's eclectic uh so who is behind that bushy red clashing beard ah yes as per usual let's review our clues and cast of characters yeah uh so as for the clues we really don't have all that many i will say we've got uh this weird floating sword ghost Mm. thing we've got a multiple buckets of dry ice and we have the schedule of this shipping company's freight ships. Yeah. Uh, as for our uh, characters here, we have the captain who kind of makes menial pay and a job he promised would be safe. You know, he wanted to like, get out of the Navy and then he got bugging attacked by pirates. Uh, and he's our only eyewitness to the ghost. Uh, we have the butler who's protective of Magnus and is kind of an all around creep. Uh, and we have Magnus, who owns the freight ships that keep getting attacked. Who do you think it is? Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it is the captain. Ooh, what's the what's the theory? I don't know. He <laughs> <laughs> just it. Just, I mean, I can't. It, I mean, Magnus is he would just be tanking his own company, right? Cause they're. He would be. And he is. And he is. It is yep. indeed Magnus. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you um, see, I try to, I try to be reasonable. Not and with this, baby. then I have to remember Scooby-Doo is never reasonable. Yep. Uh, so we learn once, I think it's the Coast Guard arrives is who they call. Uh, in this <laughs> Say case. again. I think, I think they call the Coast Guard. Oh, to, Coast Guard. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. To come. That, uh, who's Coast? Up. They're so far away. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I say I think they called the Coast Guard. Okay, yeah. Unclear. Also, Someone came in a boat. How they called them? I'm not sure. Yeah. Although they're on an island in a pirate ship. This is the late 60s, early 70s. There's no they don't. They don't use phones what are those things they use like, like the little, beep, 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 beep. oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like i guess you like morse code, morse code like telegram. Over it. yeah yeah maybe they had know. a radio in the truck yeah. or something Fred knows morse code i'm sure i'm sure, or something. You know. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. um anyways oh gosh so, tell me why magnus was tanking his own yes company. yeah similar to your episode last time i had to do a little yeah. bit of speculation uh okay. i will say really quick though that least we forget there are also two other pirates yeah but they also and, catch who daphne literally when like the coast guard is there she's just like oh they're just hired henchmen so like we don't care about them <laughs> they're, yeah they're but, identif- no don't you don't need to id them yeah they're good let them go let them go free it's fine they're tired <laughs> they're just henchmen. They're hired henchmen yeah they were, it's they were coerced fine. into this yeah yep, kind of exactly <laughs> yeah so what like why is magnus fake robbing his own ships yeah insurance scam situation i think yep a classic move so here's what i have uh deduced so magnus came from money like again his family for the last 300 years has been money but like some spoiled rich kids he doesn't know how to manage it himself Mm -hmm. so he's mismanaging it the family shipping business is passed down to him and he's like running it into the ground without even batting an eye for example, he had a gold plate with his name on it outside yeah, of his dude. penthouse. Yeah, um, you don't need but, that. <laughs> yeah, but he couldn't lose his company and thus all of his money. Uh, so he needed an accident to happen to his ships. Mm-hmm. But he saw kind of like a double whammy opportunity, two birds, one stone situation. Accident happened to his ships for insurance scam. Yeah. And let's get all of the cargo and go sell it in another classic black market Scooby-Doo scam situation. So again, getting money on both ends of this operation. Um, So again, for like some of these weird clues, the floating sword was like somehow on strings, which I guess is attached to the fact there was a bunch of like prank toys in 
one of the crates. It was um, attached to strings in the boat and in the cage. Yeah. The cage. Okay. Somehow the dry ice created Magnus the fog. Is smart. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, I guess he's good at like making, he's like good. He's smart in the home alone sense, but not in the running a multi-billion dollar corporation yeah. Kevin, sense, I Kevin guess. Kevin McAllister, Magnus. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so the dry ice created the fog. Uh, again, the other two dudes were just there for like a cut of the treasure. Higher tension. Um, yep, exactly. Nothing and so, to see here. In similar to my last story with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, mm-hmm. Magnus decided to lean on the legend of his family that included the legend of Redbeard. Uh, those ties to his family line posed as a pirate, stole his own goods from the ships, got mm-hmm. to claim that insurance and sell that shit off. Left, right, and center. Magnus is running the show hoping that sticking in international waters would give him even more cover, but not when Scooby and the gang are around. No, you can't, yeah. you can't escape them. Yep. Wow. Nowhere to hide. The end. The end. The journey. And the Coast Guard swooped him up. Swooped yep. all three of them up, I hope. Yeah. Wow. Unclear. Kids, don't get involved in insurance fraud. Don't get it's involved never. in insurance fraud. Don't get involved in piracy. Don't get involved in like, kidnapping kidnapping in like international versions of any of these things it gets even Mm -hmm. messier once you throw in as you saw at the beginning don't think just because we said does international law exist or not exist that like it means you can just go ahead and do whatever you want with it Um, yeah we need more people to be tuning in. So yeah, uh, who should they should, tell? No, oh, who should they tell? I, I asked you I asked first. You. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I wasn't ready for this today. Let's see. Uh-huh. Um, go to, uh, or maybe not today, but sometime in the next few days. I think there's some good movies coming out soon. If you're mm-hmm. comfortable with getting back out there and going to the theater, stop and maybe like split some popcorn with your friends that you go with because yeah. that shit can be expensive. Mm-hmm. But sure. tell the person working at the. Uh, at the popcorn, the concession stand. Ah. You know, they might they might be interested. People who work at theaters are usually pretty cool. Have you know a lot of yeah. pop culture interests. So I think oh, they'd like idea. this podcast. So tell them. I love that. Sometimes, and I never did this until I started dating Justin. But where we live, back when we lived in Utah, there's this movie theater by our house that we would just go and like walk in and buy the popcorn and bring it home. And like, <laughs> it's so fucking good. Popcorn theater is it's like yeah. so different because it would though. be like Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesdays would be like three dollar popcorn or something yeah, like that. So yeah, and it's like already it. empty there. Yep, yeah. exactly. Which so, side note, I actually love going to the movie theater on like Tuesdays yeah, or whatever so because go. it is so empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, hundred yeah. so, uh, percent. Yeah, so I think after you get your popcorn, um, I as you're heading to the theater, the person who has to like rip the tickets, like they are so fucking bored just standing there waiting for your like content of viewing booty to get in there <laughs> so tell them about this podcast slash vodcast so while they're standing there waiting for teens skipping class on a tuesday mm. to go see a movie they can have something to entertain themselves yeah, and i think exactly. they would appreciate that pop in a headphone while they're working and yeah, keep little, like, scanning tickets as yeah, they yeah. yeah little wireless situation so they can exactly. hide it yeah yeah, like bird has. yeah yeah perfect all right well um next Same. week will be our for now final scooby-doo episode and then we'll be yes. moving on to a different cartoon so uh we'll Stay see tuned. y'all then bye bye thanks for tuning in to saturday morning mysteries if you enjoyed this episode please share rate review leave us a like and drop a comment We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at SatmornMist, all the abreeds, and let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing SaturdayMorningMysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries.